Hey everybody, this is Viper4724, and I just wanted to uh, bring you a couple battles from the newest event. Uh, first, I'm going to show you my deck. It is um, using Dovin as my planeswalker. So, uh, as you can see from the general layout, uh, it's a lot of getting stuff off the board. If I can't get it off the board, I either want to trap it or I want to cast it out. Uh, cast it out is an extremely overpowered card because every time you play it you can select a different target and it doesn't change the target so you can have multiple disabled creatures and it has a lot of shields uh, so when you cast a support target creature is disabled until the support is destroyed um, like I said it this is just an absolutely great card uh, if you have it Make sure you're using it. Um, we're going to use War Oracle for Lifelink. Uh, the Harbinger of Tides to um, put creatures back in their hand if needed. Uh, the best thing about the Harbinger are, is that it makes the creature cost six more when it goes back into the player's hand. Uh, Sacred Cat, once again for Lifelink. Best part about this is if he ends up dying... You can get them right back. Uh, Embalm 4 is huge. Getting 4 uh, um, gems on the board to get them back with. Um, I'm really surprised at the level of ability with commons and uncommons in this set, actually. Uh, Anchor to Aether. Great card because you can put the creature back in the hand and you get to draw a card with it. Deadlock Trap, obviously. Uh, overload, disable the first creature. Winds of Rebuke. Um, this only costs four. Uh, it's a common. It's still being able to return a creature to player's hand and then just destroying the top two cards of each player's library. Um, that's fine with me. It, I could definitely understand if I only had a certain amount of cards in my deck and this was regular magic and I, you know trying to make sure I'm getting rid of the right stuff. But in this game, I mean, you have unlimited amounts of um, cards coming back to you. You never know what's coming up next. So it doesn't really hurt you that much, from my understanding, um, getting rid of the top two cards in your library. So Emperor Voyager, uh, this is to help energize the board for Deadlock Trap and for... <coughs> Excuse me, Dovin's third ability. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, Talent of the Telepath. Uh, it's kind of a nice addition. Uh, I haven't used it much, but now with the new Type 2 cards and only being able to use Standard, which is Origin Set, Kaladesh, and the new uh, Amonkhet Set, um, definitely going back to some other cards that you haven't used in a while. And this is one of them. Um, so you fetch, or look at the next three cards in your library, fetch one card from it, and it gains six mana. So, I mean, a great rare. Dynavolt Tower. It isn't absolutely necessary in this deck, but it's great to help energize the board. And obviously that little extra five damage never hurts. So... Now, we just talked about Dovin's third ability, and what that is is create a support with overload one, each creature gets plus six, plus six. So obviously with that lifelink on the board, um, as big as we can build these creatures, the better. And uh, yeah, pretty much stop his creatures from attacking and continue to use lifelink and plus six, plus six as much as possible. So... The match that we're going to be playing is going to be the Trial of Zeal event, and we're going to be looking at 3.2. Uh, this is Samet, Voice of Descent. As you can see, I have not uh, played this match yet, so there's a good chance I'm going to lose. Uh, I am going to post it either way. I'm hopeful with my deck. <clears throat> I am going to use the exact deck that I just showed you. 
Um, now, cast one or less spells during the fight. I'm probably not going to get that. And win the fight with 80 or more HP remaining, I actually have a decent shot, I feel, at getting that. So, let's go for it. Let's see what we can do. Now, I did beat 3.1. Uh, with a deck similar to this one. Uh, Dovin was actually at level 56 at the time. I decided to level him up since I'm planning on using him more now. So her ability is each creature you control gets double strike until end of turn. Um, obviously that can be huge. And so every turn, every creature gets double strike. Because it costs zero for her to use her ability. That's kind of crazy. We'll see what we can do with that though. Um, so, let's get Emperor Voyager out onto the um, board. Deadlock Trap will be a great addition so we can stop the first creature um, all the time. Uh, your goal is to have the first creature be the least powerful one in this game and then use cast out to disable the second and the third creature and obviously you want to keep cast out on the board so like I said let's see what we can do here <clears throat> there we go great start to the game um, Now, at the same time here, I really do want to get to his third ability as fast as possible. And as you can see, I'm going to hold on to that cast out. I'm also going to hold on to the Harbringer. Um, because I want to keep that just like I want to keep a regular spell. Just in case I absolutely need to put something back in her hand. So, bad for me, uh, I'm actually going to put that back in the in their hand, because uh, I don't have a very good board of um, energy, or a very good energized board yet. Obviously want to get that war oracle out there, start gaining life. And Harbringer is great to use at the very beginning. So you can uh, do more to get your own deck set up or to get your own board set up the way you want it. Um, I want to keep producing energy. So I'm actually going to save that Voyager just in case. I haven't played this deck yet. I don't know exactly what I'm up against. So I don't want to get screwed and... Uh, Obviously lose a creature and not be able to put it back out if I don't have to. Um, I'm not as worried about the support destruction, but since it still has three shield on it, I am going to hold on to that until I need to use it. Now, as you can see, I've gotten a couple plays in, so looking good there. First creature in your hand is moved to the battlefield. Wow. Well, that is a crazy ability. It's an exert three. So as long as he can't hit it, I mean, I'm given three turns to get it off the board, which is okay with me. Um, I'm still going to throw that Harbringer up there. Um, <clears throat> obviously use the cast out on the next biggest creature. Him as a 3-3 doesn't really bother me, but whatever he's bringing out in his hand, I'm kind of worried about. So, <laughs> so 
the driver picking up the sauce. He can squash the winner in the second. He gets the win. He wins by one. Okay, so we've got, while this support is on the board, creatures with flying your opponent control can attack. At the end of your turn, summon one 5-5 five five worm token. Okay, so he's going to continue to summon these, which is 100% completely fine with me. My problem is I need to get the hat off the board so I can use my Imperial Voyager. Um, so... Uh, what we are going to do is actually cast out the uh, worm, because that thing's just going to keep growing and growing anyways. We have rebuke, which is great. And see, cast out also works on tokens, whereas other stuff doesn't work on tokens. So it's a double positive. Um, happy to use that. And I guess I'm going to take the damage here and get that off the board. Disable him. As you can see, it comes on with three shield. Now, another thing about uh, the Channeler Initiate, uh, I don't necessarily want to cast out this card because it's eventually going to die. Um, I'm really happy with it in the first position because I can just try to keep it on the board as long as possible by disabling it. Um, but I'm actually not going to go out of my way to get that off the board or to cast it out or anything like that. Just going to kind of let it take its course. Now. Throne of the God Pharaoh. 